Hello everyone, this is your Nissan Leaf guy. Uh, we just ran this thing after charging it last night. We cut a little bit last night, cut to rest from where the mower's sitting to where we started last night. And we went to uh, back of the yard there. And uh, the yard's normally about 75 feet wide. Of course you got the trees. And uh, like I said, started where the mower was, fresh charge, all the way back to our woods and stopped. Now the thing's still going. So this thing cost like $249.95 at Walmart last year. And the rope, the whole idea was it's a, it's a inexpensive battery mower. It's lightweight. And uh, there's a sharp hill at the front of the property going down to the sidewalk. And at my age, it's, I'm getting too old to walk up and down. You know, I used to do it side to side. So the whole idea was to buy this thing. Tie a little cheap rope to it, and it's got the handle right there. Just lower it down the hill, raise it back up, and it takes care of something we're getting too old to do. And uh, we'll keep doing this until our hands get arthritic from pulling on the darn rope every day. But uh, as you can see, pretty good. So we've set this thing up on a through line meter on a charge our kilowatt hour price for electricity here is about a nickel and we enter that into the meter we want to charge from dead to full and it came out decimal 72.72 of one penny less than three quarters of one cent to charge this battery mower that's pretty incredible. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to turn this thing off. I'm going to go over to the side yard and uh, try to run it dead just to see how much, how much more is in it. And uh, see you in a bit. Whew, so that's it. Uh, we went around to frame it. Uh, we did all those rows. It's a 20 inch wide mower, you know, you're doing overlap and stuff. But... Uh, Got all the way back here to the gazebo, to the edge of the front of the house, several rows, and then, like I said, going around to frame it once around the gazebo, and uh, the battery's dead. So that's it. I mean, that's more range than I expected, and uh, with our electric rate, that's uh, three quarters of one penny. Pretty cool. Seen a bit. Well, here's our little charging station. We're going to wait for that uh, battery cool down before we put it on charge but like I said I've done this before it was 0.72 of one cent less than three quarters of one cent uh, we got a <clears throat> 10 gauge feed in here from years ago and I put a ground rod in not too long ago but uh, we updated 220 plugs to help with a neighbor before and uh, we're running 20 amp service to do level one charge on both sides of the garage and uh, running to the other side, we just got the, uh, you know, the 12-gauge uh, wire. And uh, what's feeding here is 10-gauge. Uh, so uh, don't pay attention to breaker numbers. I had moved stuff around when I updated for level 2 charge in the attached garage. So there's the mower over there. And uh, went further than I ever thought it would. So... Uh, we're getting a little exercise or whatever, saving on gas. Uh, it's a twin cylinder Cub Cadet I bought a few years ago for like three grand. And I uh, got the Cub Cadet lift, the wife's cat trike, a couple of the kayaks, generator, snow blower, and some old outboard motors and stuff. So we used to work on all kinds of stuff here. But uh, we've got the whole line of Cub Cadet. We've got caster mower, walk behind mower, string mower, the trailer uh, I'm sure there's more but uh, a little bit of the garage snow blower hasn't been put away yet I'm sure it's gonna stop snowing it's gonna be like in the 90s that's my dad's old compressor he bought remanufactured like over 50 years ago always blue breakers so I rewired it for 220 and now it only runs off half the amps at uh, well now everything's 240. That's one way they've got more energy coming to your house. 
We used to get 110 here for a single line, then 115, and then it went up to 120, and actually on sometimes I'm, I'm seeing 125. So that's your delivery of the current is the amount coming through the wire. So the more voltage, the less current, you don't need as big wires. So a workbench I somebody was supposed to buy in Pittsburgh never picked up. I make those. Uh, Youngstown kitchen cabinet on the right, painted for Cup Cadet. Workbench I need to clean off. There's the case for the uh, OBD2 professional series uh, and just tools and other stuff. But uh, yeah, it's just where we work on cars and stuff. We got brake, a lot of brake work, <clears throat> rebuilding front ends and all kinds of stuff. Over the years, just a lifetime supply of buying a few tools at a time for over 40 years. And uh, if you can see that, I bought that to do as a 12 volt years ago when I was really sick from eBay. By the time I was felt better, they had LED lights I could buy, so that hardly uses any power. <clears throat> and up here's one of those. Uh, you know those pole lights you put in the house that they usually come loose and the wires hanging out. The wife, that was the wife's, so I repurposed it with PVC to point down when you're working on the hood of a car. So, all right, I figured you guys would like something, somebody to tell you what's going on. Who was an electrician, electrical work, and electrical inspector from aircraft days. But uh, all right. Battery mower is pretty cool. Maybe we'll do that works battery sometime and see how much energy those use. We've got a couple works drill and a couple and a uh, wheat trimmer from works I've used for years. So if you would like and subscribe, I'd really, this is, you know, this old veteran would really appreciate that. For now, I'll let you go and we'll probably have another leaf test or something else coming your way soon. Take care.